Hello and welcome to another video review from AV Forums. I'm Phil Hinton, I'm the editor and I have been since 2003. I'm also a fully trained and qualified ISF and THX calibrator with 16 years of experience. In today's video we're looking at the new mid-range LCD TV from Samsung, the Q70R. Samsung used the marketing name of QLED for its higher end TVs and indeed the Q70R is a QLED model in the range. But you should be aware that this is an LCD TV which uses quantum dots as part of its structure to create wider colours and it's not a new TV technology like OLED is. The Q70R is very similar to the recently reviewed Sony XG95 LCD TV and we will be doing some comparison tests within the review with that TV. If you want to keep up with all of our TV reviews and enjoy the videos we produce here at AV Forums, why not click the like button and subscribe to the channel. It really does help this channel and allows us to produce even more video reviews for you. So let's get straight into the review and look at the design first. The Q70R has a minimal appearance that is modern and attractive, in as much a way that a black rectangle can be. The strip around the panel is made from black brushed metal, with all other surfaces being hard plastic, like the rear of the panel. The bezel is very thin around the edge of the screen, with just a slight chamfer to the panel's edge. Here there is a 5mm black gap between the image and the panel edge. To the bottom of the panel is a rectangular Samsung logo, which is centrally mounted. The TV sits on two plastic and metal stands that slot into the bottom of the chassis without any screws, instead they are held with magnets and the weight of the TV on top. The feet are at each end of the panel, so you will need a wide TV mounting surface with at least 40 inches for the 55 inch model we are reviewing here. While there are no screws used within the feet, everything is sturdy and safe. The minimal design language continues around the back of the Q70R with a designed 360 degree look that is the same as the higher end QLED models, but this time it is a plastic backing that is stripped in black. There is also no one connect box with the X70R and instead the connections are positioned around the rear right of the panel when you're looking from the front. Unlike the higher end QLED TVs for 2019, the Q70R doesn't have the one connect box. This is obviously a cost cutting measure and a shame as we really like the one connect approach with just one cable to the TV for power and source cables. The connections on the X70R are in a recessed area to the right rear of the panel when you're looking from the front and to the left if looking from the rear. From the top we have two USB slots, an optical digital audio output and four HDMI inputs, followed by a LAN port and two satellite and one terrestrial antennae. The four HDMI inputs are all 18 gigabits per second full bandwidth, 4K 44460p compliant with support for HDR10, HDR10+, and HLG dynamic range signals. The Q70R does not support Dolby Vision Dynamic Metadata HDR. The HDMIs also support ARC on HDMI 4 along with 4K up to 120Hz, variable refresh rate VRR, auto low latency mode which is ALLM and at the moment there is no EARC support but we do believe that Samsung will be adding that to 2019 QLED models at some point this year, although don't hold us to that one. The Samsung Q70R comes with two remote controls and both are made from black plastic. The first is a traditional style remote with plenty of direct access keys and it's a dust magnet due to its plastic finish. You have everything here that you need to control the Q70R including a direct key for the settings which is better than the smaller remote where you have to access the settings via the home screen which is a number of button presses to get there. The traditional mode is a bit cramped and busy with all the main keys in the centre within easy thumb reach, but it will suit those users who like big buttons and easy to see lettering in a logical layout. The smaller one controller is a black and plastic version of the metal unit found on the more premium QLED screens like the Q90R. It has exactly the same button layout and is simple to use. There is a directional and enter keys to the top with home, back and play and pause to the bottom of these. 
you then have two rocker switches for volume and channel selection with mute activated by pressing down on the volume rocker. We then have direct access keys for Netflix, Prime Video and Rakuten services. The top of the remote has the mic and activation button, power, gallery and numerical key selector. Both remotes are useful and logically laid out with an intuitive design on both versions. They also fit with the price point and quality of the Q70R. The Samsung Tizen Smart TV system is still one of the very best systems out there. Second only to webOS in our opinion, it is one of the most intuitive ways to navigate and select sources on a TV. The launcher bar has a two level display which gives you information about the app and selected content you may be interested in, with every major streaming and catch up service available. Moving to the left gives you access to the gallery, which allows you to set up a background to display when you're not watching TV, but would like uh, news headlines or some nice photos on display while you're doing other things about the room. For the left we also have sources, settings and apps. It really is an intuitive system to use with added benefits such as the Samsung content discovery system and a number of pay per view options for UHD and HDR films. Amazon is also now fully HDR10 Plus compatible and the Q70R will also now display that it's receiving a full HDR10 dynamic metadata signal in the launcher bar under settings. The menu system on the Q70R is very comprehensive and offers just about everything you could possibly want to set the picture, sound and more. The menus are the same for most of the 2019 Samsung TVs with very slight changes to minor features. For the most part they are identical. Picture modes remain the same choices as the Q90R so we have dynamic, standard, natural and movie, with movie being the most accurate mode to the industry standards and seeing content as intended. Heading into the expert settings we have the backlight control, set low for this video to assist exposure of the camera and this controls the entire backlight. Brightness, contrast and sharpness are left at default for SDR content as are the colour and tint controls. We can also apply all the settings we have here to all sources if we desire and digital clear view will help you with very poorly compressed SDR signals but it can't work miracles. For higher quality content it can be switched off. Auto Motion Plus is Samsung's motion interpolation system and we had good results when using it. For 24 frames per second material it's best left in the off or minimum custom settings where there's no soap opera effect from frame interpolation and pull down is correct. LED clear motion is the black frame insertion process and this did work but it adds invisible flickering which may be a little bit too much for some viewers to watch over a long period of time. We also noticed slight frame interpolation is added to this and can't be defeated. We did find that using the auto or custom settings and upping the smoothness and clearness did add in image artifacts and soap opera effect so if you're going to use it for sports viewing or other video based content it is best to spend time experimenting to get the best results that don't introduce too many artifacts. Local dimming can be set to standard for SDR content and high for HDR and the TV does this as default on detecting the signal type. Contrast enhancer just blows out highlight details and causes clipping so it's best left off if you want to have the best image quality. Color tone warm 2 is also the best accurate setting for the white balance and grayscale that gets close to the industry standards. If you're going to get your TV calibrated then a professional calibrator can access the white balance control and the the 2 point and 20 point settings to set the grayscale correctly. Gamma defaults to BT1886 for SDR content which is good for darker rooms or you can set it to 2.2 for bright room viewing. For HDR signals this changes to ST2084 for the PQ EOTF. Moving to the general menu we have the intelligent mode settings. These include adaptive brightness which changes the whole screen brightness depending on the lighting conditions in your viewing room. Adaptive sound and adaptive volume also help with the audio quality of the Q70R if you want this kind of AI solution running the TV. We decided for the best performance to switch them off but you can of course experiment to see if these would suit you. Next we head for the external device manager and within here we can manually set the game mode settings. Here you can set the TV in low latency mode as well as turning on the FreeSync VRR if you're using an Xbox One X. 
there's also the dynamic black equalizer which is a gamma manipulation tool that lightens the shadows and makes it easier to see enemies hiding from you and is a very good way of cheating. In most cases when the Q70R detects a games console loading a game it will switch into the games mode. If you use the console to watch a movie it will go back to your default movie settings. <laughs> The Q70R is just above the entry level Q60R in the 2019 QLED lineup, but it still has many of the excellent features seen on the higher end models. It has the Quantum Processor 4K that helps with upscaling performance from lower resolution materials to the panel's 4K native resolution. It is a full array local dimming backlight behind a VA panel and it has around 50 separate dimming zones to help the dimming algorithm try and produce dynamic images. HDR10 Plus is standard for dynamic metadata as well as HDR10 for static metadata signals and HLG for broadcast. The Q70R does not support Dolby Vision and there are no plans to add this. This is a shame as many companies are now giving consumers the choice of dynamic metadata systems including both HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision but Samsung still don't think it's necessary on their TVs. While it doesn't have the wide angle filter for improved viewing angles, it does still have a decent screen surface that helps reduce ambient reflections, although this is not a moth eye filter like the higher end models. But you can clearly see the difference when it's next to the Sony XG95 here. Another feature missing is the One Connect box which is on the more expensive models, but you don't lose out on the connections or features they support. It's just a matter of directly plugging your sources into the back of the TV rather than the box. Add in one of the best operating systems with Tizen Smart TV, every major catch up app and more, the Q70R is a more promising package for the more budget conscious video file and TV fan. We use the movie picture mode as it's the most accurate out of the box to the industry standards. The grayscale results were a little high in green which pushed our delta E errors above the human threshold of 3 and we could see a cyan green tint to images with actual viewing content in the movie mode. Gamma is good and the darker rise at 10% stimulus is caused by our local dimming system not being quick enough to match the meter taking the measurements so we're not really concerned about black crush and none was visible in ramp patterns. This is not a perfect result out of the box and we would like to see a more accurate performance from Samsung, however for the vast majority of viewers this is still the most accurate picture quality out of the box compared to the standard and other modes. Looking at the colour gamut for Rec 709 coverage we can see that the green push in the grayscale is visible here and pulls the gamut coverage towards green. Otherwise the saturation tracking is very accurate and by fixing the white point in grayscale we expect it to drop back to being almost perfect. We use the calibration controls available in the menu system to correct the grayscale and white point. You can see the calibrated results were reference level as delta E errors are now well under 1 so well below the visible threshold and no tint was actually seen in any viewing material. The 10% stimulus error in the gamma is due to the local dimming not keeping up with our meter which is measuring so we are not concerned about this. By correcting the white balance and grayscale, we also see the Rec 709 color gamut moving back into place where it should be. Apart from a slight tracking error in red saturation at 75%, most of the other points are very close and within visible error points, so not seen on screen with any actual viewing material. So overall we have reference level results with the grayscale and colour gamut. Delta E errors for the grayscale were 0.53 and with a full on colour checker we had an average of 2.39 which is also well under the visible threshold of 3 so again very good results for SDR content. Moving to HDR and we noticed that the Q70R tone maps the same for 1000 and 4000 nit content and it also has the slight brightness bump above the yellow standards line before rolling off at around 800 nits, trying to preserve the highlight details without excessive clipping. The 2019 QLEDs have dynamic tone mapping, which is applied all the time to static metadata signals and it can't be switched off. 
This does adjust the amount of mapping being used on a scene by scene basis as the TV reads data and adjusts the brightness and highlights according to histograms and other measurements. We are able to get the graph results much better with a drop of the contrast control by four clicks. However, this is again not quite representative as the dynamic tone mapping can't be measured to check that it's following these standards in real time. Wide color gamut coverage of the DCI P3 gamut is good, with most saturation points being close to where they should be. The Q70R doesn't quite hit the full gamut coverage, but there are no major errors and luminance is good. We measure the P3 coverage as 92% XY and 96% UV, which is decent for a TV at this price point. BT2020 coverage was 67% XY and 74% UV. Peak brightness was also just shy of 700 nits and in the real time window size test it peaked at 614 nits on a 10% window as the test pattern stepped forward. We also noted blooming suppression was used as 1% was 349 nits and 5% 493 nits in the smaller windows showing that the Q70R was trying to stop overly bright blooming from occurring. This was noticeable in some content where bright highlights retained detail but were dimmer as a result compared to a similar TV like the Sony XG95. Full frame brightness is 411 nits, which is still nice and bright when compared to similarly priced OLED screens. We did quite a bit of comparison testing with the Q70R up against the Sony XG95, which is very close on features and price point. First of all, upscaling performance from the 70R was excellent with nice sharp images that didn't have fizzing or ringing around straight edges. There are also no sign of jaggies with interlaced images and motion was also very good with low frame rate 24 frames per second material and TV broadcasts with the ticker tape on news programs remain smooth. If you use Motion Plus, you will introduce artifacts and soap opera effect smoothness to images, so this is best left off for film content. The backlight has around 50 zones of dimming on the 55 inch set we are testing here, which is around the same as the Sony XG95, yet the Samsung managed to keep the black bars of HDR movies we reviewed black and not light them up like they are on the Sony. We also thought that colours for SDR content on the Samsung were very good and close to that of the Sony. When we moved to HDR, the Samsung was certainly a little bit more saturated than the XG95 and often looked a little oversaturated with some reddish skin tones looking a tad too tanned. We also noticed the backlight dimming a little more on the Samsung with some delays and brightness changes on screen making the dimming stand out. It was also obvious that the local dimming was a little aggressive and can start to crush some areas of shadow detail on screen. This was noticeable on the tumbling Sandra Bullock in Gravity scene when compared to the Sony holding more detail on screen and the Samsung crushing a little bit too much. We also noticed this with subtitles within a dark scene where we didn't get any issues with over the top blooming thanks to the dimming suppression but it can be seen that shadows are being crushed to compensate. So we get no blooming with subtitles but we do get some black crush as a consequence of this. Once again, it's up to the end user to choose their poison. The aggressive dimming is far less noticeable on the Samsung than the Sony lighting up the black bars for instance. You're just not aware of the slight black crush unless you have a side by side with another display. Without subtitles on screen and watching the same scenes, the blacks are deep and rich on the Samsung Q70R with a nice dynamic range visible, but you can see that the peak highlights are slightly suppressed against the same details on the Sony. In HDR, there is still a nice sense of image depth and dynamic range on the Samsung, but it's clearly not as dynamic as the Sony and the 700 nits peak brightness is more noticeable against the 1100 nits of the Sony. However, the Q70R is more consistent and balanced with nice interesting contrast and no black bar issues, which remain deep black as they should. While it might only reach 700 nits peak brightness, we did find the Samsung image to be balanced and nuanced in a dark room with good shadow details and image depth. It is on a par with most OLEDs with its peak highlights, but not quite as precise with the black levels and per pixel dynamics. However, while we did spot the odd local dimming issue now and again, the Q70R is impressive with its HDR images looking natural and not restricted with any APL issues, and APL is consistent. 
We also thought that the Q70R did on occasion look a little bit too bright in some scenes with clipping of details we would have otherwise expected to see, and skin tones were sometimes a little bit plaster seen in looks with details missing in the brightness. There's also no Dolby Vision support, which is going to be an issue for any TV set in 2019, but it does support HDR10 plus dynamic metadata, and this is an even more impressive HDR experience than just the static HDR10 approach. Watching Bohemian Rhapsody, which is HDR10 plus on 4K Blu-ray, we found the approach to be far more nuanced and not as overly bright with some skin tones. We thought that everything was just more balanced, with no obvious signs of the local dimming getting in the way. Instead, we got the best possible image the Q70R is capable of, something dynamic metadata is designed to do. Overall, with a good mix of material, the Samsung Q70R produces a decent image in both SDR and HDR, with HDR10 Plus looking the best for image consistency, detail, blacks and dynamic range. It's a shame there's no Dolby Vision support, as that would probably seal the deal given the capabilities of this panel and the dynamic metadata approach. There is no such thing as the perfect TV, and each technology and model offers different pros and cons which may or may not suit what you're looking for. At this level of the market, there are some big differences to the flagship models, with some features carried over and others either missing or pared down to the price point. The Q70R is a full array local dimming setup with a VA panel and the Quantum Processor 4K chip. It has around 50 separate dimming zones and advanced dimming algorithms produced at deep blacks and decent peak brightness levels. The dimming is unseen for the most part, but it is not as advanced as the Q90R or have as many zones, so it's possible to see brightness changes as the dimming is not quite as fast. However, even though there are only 50 dimming zones, the same as the Sony XG95 we tested it with, it does have solid blacks with HDR scope films and few instances of blooming, but it also isn't nearly as bright as the Sony. The Q70R has good blooming suppression, with little seen even in tricky dark scenes with subtitles, but it does this by dimming peak brightness points to the image, thus slightly reducing the dynamic range and crushing some blacks in some very tricky scenes. As we said at the start, there's no such thing as a perfect TV, and compromises are made in all consumer sets. Out of the box accuracy is decent, but it could be better. However, when calibrated, the results are close to reference level, and this can be seen, especially with SDR content. Motion is also very good and on a par with the Sony XG95 in comparison testing. Plus, the upscaling and quantum processor is also very good with little in the way of ringing around straight edges and no signs of any backdoor noise reduction. The smart TV system is one of the best available, along with the operating system being super fast and never once crashing or slowing down due to the load put on it. You can instantly swap between apps, and of course you now have Apple TV and AirPlay 2 available for 2019. The Q70R is also a very good gaming TV, with excellent features like VRR and low latency available, along with a new Gamma Shift tool and auto game switching mode. Input lag is also measured at an excellent 13.7 milliseconds. The Samsung has its strengths and weaknesses when compared to its peers like the Sony XG95, and whether the Q70R suits you will certainly come down to what it is that you want from your TV. With HDR images, the Q70R gives a solid and consistent performance with decent colours and strong blacks. It's not as bright as the Sony for peak highlights, but it has a more consistent image that suits the strengths of the Q70R. The local dimming is strong with no signs of the black bar issues we saw with the Sony, and only the odd instant of black crush is visible now and again in the shadows. It has decent blooming suppression, which does dim the brightest peaks in the image to achieve this, but we also saw no obvious blooming in the majority of content we watched. With SDR content, the Q70R is also very good with near reference level calibration results and decent black levels in shadow detail. We see less of the dimming suppression at work, so images remain bright and consistent throughout with excellent colours and skin tones. Gaming is also a highlight here, and the Q70R is certainly a TV gamer should really pay attention to with its excellent input lag, along with most of the HDMI 2.1 features of VRR, ALM and auto game switching, even though the Q70R is an HDMI 2.0B TV. 
even though there are some issues with the local dimming being a tad aggressive now and again with HDR images and a lack of overall peak brightness in HDR, the Q70R is a great all-round TV in most other cases, with very good SDR, great colours and black levels, excellent smart TV capabilities and an excellent option for gamers at a reasonable price point. As such, we feel it's a solid 8 out of 10 when taking all the pros and cons into consideration and we feel it deserves a recommendation on those points. If you'd like to see more videos like this then please like and subscribe and why not click the notification bell to find out when our next review is available.